Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I have a few announcements for you. Uh, one is that healing prayer will take place after worship today at the altar rail. We would have done that last week. We normally do that on the first Sunday, but we had a snowstorm last week. So we will do it on the second Sunday um, this month. So if you would like individual prayer, please come forward after worship today. Another announcement that I'd like to make is it doesn't say it in your bulletin, but we do in fact have coffee and goodies downstairs. So if you'd like to go to coffee hour, please go down and join us in Luther Hall after worship today. And then um, next Sunday is our annual meeting. The annual meeting is where we talk about um, the past year and kind of celebrate the past year, but also talk about the budget and looking forward a bit. So that will be next Sunday after worship. So around, and we'll have a little bit of chance to grab a cup of coffee and cookies. So probably around 11.30 down in Luther Hall. Um, so please join us for that. And then there are annual reports printed in the back. If you're on our email list, you would have been emailed as well. But if you would like a paper copy, they are in a basket, I think, in the back. Um, so please grab that on your way out. And then also, if you bought, I'm going to have to say this word out loud, and I'm not very good at, I mispronounced it, poinsettia, poinsettia, the red flowers that are here at Christmas, if you purchased one and you did not pick it up, they are on the table in the back, please feel free to grab it and take it with you after worship today. So with that, let's take a moment to take a deep breath and center ourselves for worship this morning by listening to the praise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but we have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from the first book of Samuel, 
chapter 3, 1 through 20. Just a little background. Samuel was the last judge to lead Israel and the first prophet. He also transitions from the judgeships to a monarchy by getting King Saul installed. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time and he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever. For the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain, restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, here, he, he said, here I am. And Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite any children to come forward for a children's sermon. Hey, Jane. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Eli. Eli, did you hear your name in the reading today? Yes. Yes, I heard it too. That was pretty exciting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So today, I brought some things. Have you guys ever heard of show and tell before? Ooh. Yes. All right, I brought some things to show and tell from my office today. All right, are you ready? Let's see what I have here. What is this? Elephant. An elephant. Yes, this is a small stuffed elephant that someone gave to me because there was a really big elephant I had in my office when I was at another church. And there was one girl who always brought, came to my office and took the elephant to church. And so whenever I see this elephant, I think of her. All right, what else do we got in here? This. Uh, anybody know what this is? A cup. Do you ever see a cup like this during church? No. Yes. When do you see this, Thomas? There's nothing inside the cup. We usually use this good checking, though. But you see the swirl? There's a swirl inside the cup, a little detail on it. It's a drinking. Yeah, we usually drink out of things like this. And we use these cups during communion. Yeah. And this cup I bought with actually Brett. And we were at an art show. And we both thought it was really beautiful. And so whenever I look of it, I think of that time before, actually, we had Thomas and Jane, that Brett and I went to that art show. All right. Oh, okay, Jane, thank you. What is this, guys? A painted rock. Yeah. So there is a painted rock there that says, all has been made ready and all are welcome. And then on the back, what do you see? A cross. A cross and, and, and chairs and sun and birds and chairs yes the sun and birds and chairs and a tree and this is not just any rock that's painted but this someone at uh when i was at gloria day lutheran church painted this for me because this is the line i always said uh when communion was starting 
And during, the pan during COVID, we had worship outside under a very, very big tree. And so she painted that tree on that. <laughs> and so the reason I want to show you guys some things from my office is because, you know how sometimes, like this, this could just be an ordinary painted rock. But sometimes we have things that remind us of the story of when we received them or when the person who gave them to us. And they're very, very special. And so that's why sometimes it's important to show one another things and to tell the story to one another. And in the Bible story that we just read, Jesus is calling his disciples. And the, does anybody know who this, what the disciples did? They followed Jesus, right? And Jesus taught them, and they helped do, uh, Jesus do ministry with Jesus. And one of the things that Jesus does is Jesus calls you and you and you and you and me and everybody to be a disciple of Jesus. <coughs> and so one of the things it means to be a disciple of Jesus is to show love to one another and to people who we encounter. Jesus' book. Jesus' book? Yeah. The Bible? Yeah. yeah. We hear about that in Jesus' book, the Bible. And so we try our best to love one another and to make, just in the same way, when I see this rock, I feel the love of the person who painted it. And so we try to share that love with people who we come across. So let's pray together. Can you fold your hands and close your eyes? Let us pray. Dear God, you invite us to come and to see, and we get to see you and our neighbors and the people who we encounter. Help us to see the needs of others and try our best to meet them. In your son's name we pray, amen. All right, thank you guys for coming up. Ah, thanks, Jane. Oh. <laughs> You did that right into the microphone there, Miss Jane. <laughs> All right, honey, you head back to daddy, okay? See you later. That girl is three and she can run in heels. I can't even do that. So I want to invite you to think about a time when you experienced something and you wanted to tell someone about that experience, but you just couldn't quite find the words to say it. Maybe it was a time that you experienced a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset and the colors that the sun had formed, in particular the way the colors reflected on the water that you were looking at. Maybe you were one of the lucky few who got tickets to the Taylor Swift concerts that were all around, or you were one of the lucky few too that got tickets to see the Taylor Swift concert in the movie theater with people around you, and that was an experience of joy and being in a community together, all singing and dancing to the music together. Or maybe it was when you were sitting with someone who you loved and that person died. And the heavy grief that that is and the privilege that it was to sit and to hold his or her hand as they transitioned on. When is a time that you experience something that you just had a hard time finding the words for it? You see, there's a reason we sometimes have a hard time finding words for things, because it comes down to our brains. The left side of our brain is where language is found. But the right side of our brain, anybody who is in Bible study is like, ah, she looked it up. Um, the right side of our brain is where emotions come from. And so, because the two don't always kind of interact with one another, it's the reason why putting words to emotion is really difficult for us. Maybe you had a time that, you know, you made a decision and you couldn't quite express why you were making it. 
but you just knew it was the right thing or it was the wrong thing. Maybe you said, I just felt it. I can't describe it, but I feel it in my gut and I know it's a thing that I'm, I'm called to do. The reason that we can't really describe it is because it's an emotion. And I think that's too sometimes with our experiences as well. It hits us emotionally and it hits us deeply. And it's like all we can do is say, come and see. I can't even describe this to you, but come and see for yourself. It's something that you have to experience. And so that line, come and see, is something we hear in our gospel reading today as we hear from John the calling of the disciples. But it is not the calling of the disciples that we typically think of, where Jesus is walking along the shore and sees fishermen, and the fishermen drop their nets and leave their families and follow Jesus. Instead, in the Gospel of John, Jesus is walking near John the Baptist, the one who is kind of paving the way for Jesus's ministry. And he declares, here comes the Son of God, the Messiah. And two of John's disciples see Jesus, go up to Jesus and say, where are you staying, Rabbi? And Jesus says, come and see. And they follow and they go and see Jesus. And then Jesus finds Philip, and Philip finds Nathaniel, and Nathaniel has his doubts, as we saw in our gospel reading, when he said, can anything good actually come out of Nazareth? Can really the Son of God come out of this backwater place, the last place that you would ever expect God to be? And what does Philip say? He says, <laughs> come and see. And he does. And even after he doubts, he still proclaims that Jesus is the Son of God. And so there is power in that phrase, come and see. There is power in inviting one another to not even put words around it, but just come and experience what you are experiencing. I think that's why sometimes we may have an easier time describing our faith community here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Maybe we can tell people about the programs we have. Maybe sometimes we complain about the things we wish we still had, but we no longer do. Maybe we can tell people about the beautiful organ or the piano that is like this as I hear a Tiffany Diamond, essentially, a very rare piano, maybe you can go and say you have the wisest pastor on the planet who always gives really wise and engaging sermons. I'm sure you all are saying that, right? To all of your friends. Mm -hmm. But we have a hard time sharing and speaking about how the teachings of Jesus have changed us and the way we view one another and the world that we live in. We may have a hard time finding the words to share how encountering the faith of a child or encountering the faith of an older adult, how knowing them and hearing their story has changed our faith and changed us deeply. That sometimes is hard for us to be able to describe. And that's where those words, just come and see, comes to play. So Kathy Rush, in Bible study this week, I'm giving you credit because you brought it up to me, um, shared a story that she read um, from a commentary called Working Preacher. And it's a story about Mother Teresa. And so a rich donor came to Calcutta and met Mother Teresa and she pulled out her checkbook and she said, how can I help you with your work? Essentially saying, what number? What number do you need me to write here to make sure that you can do good work? And Mother Teresa didn't say, well, I need a million dollars. Thank you very much. But Mother Teresa took the checkbook and she put it back in the woman's purse. And then she grabbed her by the hand and she said, come and see. And she took her in where there was a hungry child. And she invited the woman to sit next to the child and to give her food 
and to hold her and to hug her and to wipe her brow. That is the importance of coming and seeing, of that experience of caring when we care for a child, which is something Mother Teresa said, we are caring for Jesus. When we love the unloved, we are loving Jesus. That's the power of come and see. And so let us invite one another to do that. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God.
As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of fig trees and fertile soil. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. We especially pray for Judith, Dan, Paul, Isabel, Joe, Fred, Bob, Mary, Virginia, Barb, Kimberly, Deborah, Jeffrey, Elaine and Tom, Emily and Aaron, Monique, Mike, Alan, Ileana, George, Georgia, John, Debbie, Rosemary, Marcia, Paul, Michelle, Sue, Susan, Betsy, Jeff, Mark, Art, June, Ray, Sarah, Nancy, Peter, Aaron, Lore. We pray for friends and members of Emmanuel, all of our homebound members and caregivers, all members and friends of Emmanuel who are currently serving in the military, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, our companion synod, all of the young adults who are serving in global mission, and St. George Episcopal Church in Bolton, part of our MAC prayer cycle. Spirit today to bless our prayer shawls, those who created them and those who will receive them. May the prayers woven into them with love be as comforting as the warmth they offer, the shoulders and laps they cover. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world, God of unity. Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another with a sign of that peace.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he has, was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Please be seated as our communion assistants come forward. Here at Emmanuel, all are welcome at this table of grace. We'll begin with the pulpit side, moving from the front to the back, and you are welcome to receive on the floor in a continuous style, or you're welcome to come up to the altar rail. You'll be given a wafer, and we have a gluten-free wafer. If you are in need, just ask for that when you come forward. And there are small cups of red wine and of white grape juice. And you can place those small cups that are um, in the receptacles that are on either side as you go back to your seats by way of the side aisle. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
Amen.
please rise in body or spirit as we continue on page eight of our worship folder. Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power, for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. like healing prayer after service you may come to the altar rail after the post to leave go in peace for you are god's beloved thanks, thanks be to god, god. 